Now the final part of this chapter involves the same type of question. You have the same procedure, so you're still gonna have your table, but this time they're going to give you the value of Kc, okay? And they're going to ask you then about what the concentrations are maybe of one species in terms of the reactants or product or whatever, or they could ask you about them all. But the key thing to remember here is that when they give you Kc, this is going to be an algebraic exercise, okay? So when you read a question and it says the value of Kc is, then that means two things actually. It means, first of all, you have to write out the Kc expression, and secondly, you have to set the Kc expression equal to that value, okay? So just a few things I want to point out here. If the value of Kc is given, and we're asked to write out or work out the concentrations of certain species in equilibrium, I want you to think of two things. Number one, write out the Kc expression automatically. Every time Kc is mentioned, write down the Kc expression. And number two, set Kc equal to the value that they actually give you. So you write the expression and you set the expression equal to the Kc value, okay? The initial concentrations will still be given. So they have to start you with something. So what they'll do in questions like this is they'll tell you the starting concentrations. They'll tell you nothing about the change. They'll tell you nothing about equilibrium, but they'll simply say what the Kc value is. So therefore we have to introduce x okay and in these cases as i've said already we're going to let x stand in for the unknown change in concentration now the key thing is this in the previous questions you were working with values in the change line now you're working with x but the x has to be written in the same ratio as the balanced equation so this time you're applying the ratio of the balanced equation to the x's that would be present in your change line okay and finally, then, you're going to be left with an equation in X that you can solve algebraically. And I suppose the most difficult one that they could leave you with would be nothing more than a quadratic equation for which you use minus B. Okay? But we look about those when we do a bit of practice on these two. So I'm going to take two questions here. I'm going to go through them with you. And then I'm going to set you some to do yourselves. And when they're done, then, we'll come back and take a look at how you've gone on with those. If you find them difficult, maybe we'll try and have a live class again on Monday at, um, a bit of chemistry on Monday, at 5 to 11, okay? But I'll talk more about that later on. So let's take an example. The value of Kc for the reaction given below is 4. Now, straight away, what would I do there? I see mention of Kc, and I'm told what its value is. So immediately, I would write down the following. Kc equals the concentration of CH3, COO, C2H5, multiplied by the concentration of water over the concentration of the acid, multiplied by the concentration of the alcohol. And I would set it equal, here's the difference, set the Kc equal to 4 because we're told what Kc is, okay? So when you're given Kc, you don't just write the Kc expression, you write the Kc expression and set it equal to the value of Kc that they give you. And then you carry on in exactly the same fashion as before. You write down your four species, CH3, COOH, C2H5OH, CH3, COO, C2H5, that's your ester, and your H2O. And you Look at your starting quantities, your change, and your equilibrium. Now, it's the equilibrium line that's all important. That's why I always put it in a box, because it reminds me that there the values are going to be putting into Kc later on. Okay, so let's go back and take a look and see what we're given. Calculate the concentrations of the products if one mole of ethanoic acid, there's the acid, and four moles of the alcohol, ethanol, reach equilibrium at the same temperature. Now you've got the same start. So in the beginning, there will be one mole of the acid, four moles of the alcohol, there will be no products. Okay, that's the same as before. Now, notice there's no mention of equilibrium concentrations, there's no mention of any change. So here's where we have to introduce X. And what I'm gonna to say to you is always let X be the change, okay? So let X be the change. So what does that mean? Well, let's say that we start off with one mole of the acid. We know it's going to decrease by something. So let it decrease by X. And then let the X's be distributed to all the reactants and products according to the ratio 
in the balanced equation. So the ratio on the balanced equation is 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. Now what does that mean? That means that they're all going to get an x. However, the reactants will be used up by x and the products will be increased by x. So therefore, by the time we now go down each column to the equilibrium line, we end up with the following. 1 minus x moles per litre for the acid, 4 minus x moles per litre for the alcohol, x moles per litre for the ester, and x moles per litre for our water. So now I have my concentrations at equilibrium, but I have them in terms of x, and that's perfectly fine. OK, now what are we going to do? We're going to take these equilibrium values and we're going to put them back into the equilibrium expression to form an equation in X. And here's what we get. We're going to end up getting Kc is equal to the concentration of the ester, which is X, multiplied by the concentration of the water, which is X, over the concentration of the acid, which is 1 minus X, over the concentration of of the alcohol, which is 4 minus x. And of course, that is equal to 4. So all we've got to do now is to work with top and bottom to get x squared on the top over, multiply these two brackets out here, so you'll get 4 minus x minus 4x, which is minus 5x, and then you'll get plus x squared. And that is equal to 4. Okay? Now, what we can do in this stage is clear your fractions. So multiply both sides by 4 minus 5x plus x squared and see what we end up with. x squared is equal to 16 minus 20x plus 4x squared. And to tidy that up, because don't forget quadratic equations must be always solved and they're equal to 0, you end up getting 3x squared minus 20x plus 16 is equal to zero. And that is the quadratic equation that I've got to take into the minus b, okay? Into the minus b formula, okay? So let's take it into the minus b formula. Don't forget, three is a, minus 20 is b, 16 is c. So we end up getting minus b, which is 20, plus or minus the square root of 20 squared, minus four times three times 16, all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 3. Now on your calculator, I would advise you to put that in very carefully. So turn on your fraction. 20 plus the square root of 400 minus 4 threes or 12 times 16 all over 6. So the first answer we have comes out as 5.74. There's your first answer. 5.74. And the second answer that comes out when I change the plus for a minus in the minus b formula comes out as 0.93. Now, surely there can't be two answers. So what I've got to do is to look at both possible values of x and simply by logic choose which one fits What's going on? Well, don't forget, we're starting with one mole of acid and, one, and four moles of alcohol. One mole of acid drops by X. Well, it can't be that value because one mole of the acid can't drop by 5.74 moles. So therefore, we're going to eliminate that as my answer and instead use 0.3 as the value of X that I'm looking for. So what I then do is I go back to my equilibrium mixture and I put in 0.93 for x and that's going to give me over here 0.07 in here the same 4 minus 0 0.93 3.07 here we're increasing by x to 0 0.93 and 0 0.93 so those numbers now that I have in brackets they are the concentrations of every species at equilibrium. But what did the question ask? The question says, calculate the concentrations of the products. Well, the concentration of the products, both the same, the concentration of the products is 0.93 moles per litre at equilibrium. And that's the answer.
Okay, so the mathematics is not that difficult. It's in line with what you would have looked at in junior cert. It's just taking the X as the unknown change in concentration and applying X with the same ratio that's in your balanced equation in order to get the equilibrium concentrations in terms of X. And once we have them in terms of X, we feed them into the equation, into the KC expression. OK, let me do one more. Let's take this one here. At 100 degrees Celsius, the value of KC is 0.36. Now, what do I do straight away? Straight away, write down what the KC expression is. The concentration of products, nitrogen dioxide, raised to the power of 2 over the concentration of reactants, N2O4, and that's raised to the power of 1. But I also know that it's not 0.36. And it's into that expression that I'm going to place my concentrations at equilibrium when I have them worked out by using my table. So in this case, there's only two species, dinitrogen tetroxide and nitrogen dioxide. And I have a starting quantity, there must be a change, and I want to get to equilibrium. So that's my aim. Okay, so what do I start with? Well, let's read on. 0.1 moles of N2O4 is placed in a one litre flask. So not 0.1 moles of N2O4. Now again at the start, there will be no products. So we're fine. But then it doesn't say anything else about changes or any concentrations of equilibrium. It just says calculate. So we don't know how to progress onwards in terms of numbers, but we do know how to progress in terms of X. So let's just say that in this case, the nitrogen, the dinitrogen tetroxide drops. It's going to drop by something. We don't know how much it's going to drop by. So therefore we're going to say it's going to drop by an unknown quantity. The change line has to have the same ratio as the balanced equation, which is one is to two. So therefore, if the N2O4 is dropping by one X, then the NO2 is going to increase by two X. That's what the balanced equation tells me. And I always apply the ratio of the balanced equation to the change line. Now, go down your columns. The concentration at equilibrium of the N2O4 is 0.1 minus x and the concentration of the NO2 is 2x and all I've got to do with those concentrations now is put them into the KC expression so take them and put them into KC what does it become the concentration of nitrogen dioxide squared so I'm going to get 2x squared over the concentration of N2O4 0.1 minus x Right? And that is equal to 0.36. And what I have to do now is I've got to play around with these in order to develop a quadratic equation. So on the top, we get 4x squared over 0.1 minus x equals 0.36. Always clear the fractions. So you're going to multiply both sides by 0.1 minus x. And that's going to give me 4x squared is equal to 0.036 minus 0.36x. So in other words, you're multiplying the 0.36 by both of these. So that's a tenth. So a tenth of 0.36 is 0.036 minus x times 0.36 is minus 0.36x. And there's your quadratic equation. So what is your quadratic equation? Because make sure that it has to be set equal to zero when you go to solve it. It's 4x squared plus 0.36x minus 0.036 equals zero. And that's what you take into your minus B expression. So A is four, B is 0.36, and C is minus 0.036. So just be careful that the C is negative when you're putting it into your formula. So minus B becomes minus 0.36 plus or minus the square root of B squared, that's not 0.36 squared minus 4 times a times c. Okay, all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 4. Now, straight away, your calculator will give you two answers to that. So you just fill in your minus b formula and allow the calculator to do the rest. So minus 0.36 plus the square root of 0.36 squared minus 4 times 4 times minus 0.036. Now, 
Now again, you've got to be careful that you put these in, things in properly. Over two fours, which is eight. And the first answer we get when we do that is 0 0.06. And the second answer we get, so go back and change the plus to a minus just in front of the square root sign on your calculator. The second answer I work out at is minus 0 0.15. Now I think it's obvious as to which of those two answers is not going to be accepted. Obviously that cannot be accepted for the very simple reason that if you take minus 0.15 back up in here for x, it becomes plus 0.15, which tells me that the reactance is increasing, which is rubbish. So that's gone. Negative values are never used, which means that this is my value for x. So x is equal to 0 0.06. Now, what do I do with that 0 0.06? I bring it back to the equilibrium line and I turn the algebraic equilibrium concentrations into actual concentrations. So 0.1 minus the new value of x, what does that give me? That's going to give me 0 0.04 moles per liter. And then the concentration of the products at equilibrium is two times the new value of x, which is 0 0.12. So it says calculate the concentrations of NO2 and uh, N2O4 at equilibrium. Well, there they are. So the concentration of N2O4 at equilibrium is equal to 0 0.04 moles per litre and the concentration of your NO2 at equilibrium in moles per litre is 0 0.12 and that's your answer that's it okay now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a couple of questions on Google Classroom for you I have to go and find them now and just work out where they are they're all they're in the textbook and they're in the workbook and they're also up on the uh, past exam papers so give me a while I'm going to pull them out I'm going to put them up in Google Classroom. I'm going to ask you to work through them, okay? Work through them carefully. If you're finding that the algebra is any way difficult as you're doing them tomorrow, send me an email. Just send me an email there and then, and I'll see if I can get a live class organized, maybe one-on-one -on -one or one with a group of three or four or whatever. Um, hopefully, the internet will stay up this time, and we'll see if we can work through that with you. So off you go. Go into Google Classroom, find the questions, work on them, and come back to me if you've got a difficulty.